two of the most distressing minutes of television I've seen in a long time. <laughs> yeah. That's the end of episode five, not anywhere through four. Four I found to be very interesting. Hi, everybody. I'm Connor. Welcome to the Phantom Zone. We're talking about episodes four and five of Legion. Yep. Um, God, this show is strange. Yes. It's strange, but so amazing. Uh, this is a very micro-hosted episode, by the way, because everybody is uh, uh, dead or dying. As yep. This is put it that way. That's how it seems to be. Um, yeah. Eric has probably killed his entire family. Uh, it's gone, he's gone <laughs> wow. full shining, full, uh, full Jack uh, I think Hunter's body is now basically two-thirds alcohol. Yeah, probably. Um, so, yeah. It's oh, actually, show. actually, I'm sorry. He, he informed us. Hunter's dead. Um the Devil May Cry 5 announcement happened, and now he's a ghost. Yeah, I... Uh, it almost happened to me, because uh, Se- Sekiro got announced, uh, The Shadows Die Twice, and I lost my mind for a few minutes. Is that the Samurai one? That is the fucking... That's Dark Souls meets Arkham meets fucking Onimusha from the guys who make Dark Souls and Ooh. Bloodborne. Yeah. Looks awesome. E- E3 is happening, by the way, everybody, that we're not talking about. Um, uh, um, so episode four. Oh yeah, who else is here? <laughs> I don't know. Did Arlen go yet? Uh, Arlen Haro here as usual. And Luke Gonzalez, the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you want to call yourself, I mean... Jesus, it looks like I'm here. I'm the perpetual fifth wheel. <laughs> no, it, well, yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah, still... then you, and, you and Eric and Chris now share the same slot of uh, third and fifth wheel. Yeah. yeah that's fine. I mean... Um, whenever yeah. Chris decides to show his face, and he comes in here and acts all sad. Yeah. He's, a, he's a, like a Marley from a, a Christmas Carol. He's... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I am <Ooh>, changed. <laughs> um, I, I remember seeing the... Jim Carrey Christmas Carol in theaters. Yeah. Um, and was scared to death the entire time. That movie is not for children. <laughs> is uh, that the CGI for... one? Yes. It's uh, disturbing just because of that CGI it's stuff. But so also. Fuck up. I, I, we got done. I was like, that was a straight up horror movie. Yep. Also, it's like it's... Marley, Marley comes in, his yeah. jaw fucking falls off. Like at some point, a bunch of ghost kids decay mm-hmm. and wither right in front of Scrooge's feet and turn to bones. Like the ghost of Christmas fucking, I think it was. Past or present? The giant dude. Yeah. Pre- uh, past. past. No, that's present. Because he's, he's no, present. He, like he's his I don't know. side manipulating. Like it, it look, it's trippy as fuck every time yeah. he moves because it's the perspective changes and like Scrooge is constantly being tossed through different forms of reality and all this other shit. And then the great, and then finally the Ghost of Christmas Future shows up. You're like, oh, good, the tour, the tour de force of terror. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, you finally brought in the Grim Reaper. <laughs> like, yeah. It's the only thing missing. In this fucking horror show. Um, but Legion, uh, episode five of Legion was the most terrifying thing I've seen in a minute, but episode four was really interesting because, uh, if anybody else tried this, if Flash kind of did this and Legends of Tomorrow kind of did this Mm. in a much different way, um, but that was time loops and this is go over your work again and find the mistake. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's very, it's, it's taking a, a pretty common TV trope at this point, and kind of doing something very different with it. Um, and it's it's interesting, and we learn a lot about Sid. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. And, oh, I thought it was it was absolutely great. Yeah, and I oh, think that's a fantastic. good idea. This, this was riveting. Yeah. Um, also, especially... um, it's I like the fact that like David never found the answer. Yeah. And yeah. it kind of because. The one thing we tell people is, like, David's an unreliable narrator. Like, everything he's seeing, interpreting, in, in, interpreting, interpolating, <laughs> interpolating. Um, uh, like, everything he sees and his interpretation of things mm-hmm. can't be trusted. And yeah. since he's your, he's your focal character, like, everything he sees, you know, you see. Everything he experiencing, you're experiencing. But now we've basically learned, like, he is not going to have all the answers uh, more yeah. often than not. Yeah. And I think one, one of the things that this episode addresses... And it's something that was a problem in season one, and it's still a problem in this season, is that um, most of the characters other than David aren't as well developed. Um, that's just been an ongoing problem. And this episode does a lot to sort of fix that, um, which is something I, think I that enjoy. If you include the last one, I think that 
those two really do that because we I yes. can't what what the hell's the character the one with the memories uh, autonomy autonomy yeah, I'm looking Patonomy. at the IMDb but... he's named after um uh, a pharaoh is he not a, a, I, I know that now because so. I just played Assassin's Creed Origins uh probably Autonomy. a Greek pharaoh because autonomy something like cause... yeah probably maybe yeah because uh, the yeah. Greeks and the yeah the Greeks and the Egyptians they uh, shared a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm thinking. I'm sorry. It's very similar pronunciation. It's uh, Ptolemy is the pharaoh I'm thinking of. I'm not sure who Ptolemy is though. Hmm. Interesting. Oh no! Wait, no. Hold on. I don't know who I'm talking about. I have my facts mixed up. But like that. There's that episode... too many names that have PT to start with. <laughs> yeah, but that episode gave us like a kind of look at him in a way of like, yeah. oh, the guy that can remember everything. What would he want? And that would be to remember nothing like it would be a break yeah him and especially and, uh, as we... what's her face that i can't remember the name of ever but uh the um, gene smarts character um they're like sort of leader person yeah although yeah. she's taken a real big back burner this season. yeah the professor i feel like I, I i've seen her three times i think she showed up in episode like the end of episode eight i think was like when she kind of re-enters the fray Mm. Yeah, but she's the one with the uh, Wendigo or like Minotaur in her mind or whatever. Yes. In her, yeah. In her maze. Um, <laughs> the computer screen thing too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's her. Well, this um, show has done more for my perception of psychic mutants in the X Men universe than anything related to that property has in a long time. Well, it's it goes into the because I love whenever the guy that plays Farouk is on screen, he's goddamn amazing. Yeah, he is. He's just dripping charisma and any other adjective you want to name he is perfect but his explanation of like that they're not like anybody else they're like their way that they view the world is how the world will exist because that's how powerful they are yeah basically the two of them and um what's his name the one that fruk is inside oliver yeah oliver yes uh he jermaine clement uh I've seen go from a wacky guy on TV um, to one of my favorite, like, movie and TV actors. Mm -hmm. uh, he is incredible at whatever he does. Yeah. He has an unlimited range because he's from, like, he's a talking crab in Moana to being this, like, <laughs> this this absolutely, like, kind of scary character in the show, especially he's in also, episode and five. If you, if you watch him in, like, uh, What We Do in the Shadows, he's a fucking goofball. Yeah. Oh, or if he you watch like so Flight of, funny, Flight of the Concords. Yeah, and I believe he's the one who does the Bowie song in Rick and Morty. Yes. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, the Bye, Moon Man. Man. yeah. He he's a massive Bowie fan. That's why if you listen to the song from Moana, it again sounds just like Bowie. Yeah, it does. It really it's, does. It's so great. Yeah. Uh, act. Uh, I'll talk about Arby Plaza when we start to get more into Episode Five. Oh. But yeah, she's... I would say not just her, but um, Katie Asselton is also amazing and i've seen her in other stuff and never drama and she blew me away in that episode too mm -hmm. is she, was she his sister yes yeah okay she, yeah there are things to say about her because yeah she um she she does some things that are pretty strong and especially in this season she was kind of in the background and she she's really only wasn't in like part of anything last season. she was in like three or four episodes last season at the end yeah yeah most but it is uh, interesting, like, these three episodes, it's really, or these two episodes are carried yeah. by, like, the three main females in David's life. Yeah. Yeah, is it's it... interesting. Uh, I, I did, episode five was where the distress, the, the, the stressful two minutes comes from, but this had some real yes. intensity to it, too. Mm -hmm. um, when he's going through Sid's mind and she swaps bodies with that dude mm. at school, and then he, oh. he beats the fuck out of those yeah. three girls with a fucking... Well, what was that? Uh, a lacrosse stick. Yeah, the yeah, lacrosse stick. I, I was like, oh my god! Like <laughs> this show shifts genres like within the same scene. Um, well, like yeah. which you're both is like what I love. I think one of the that scene is both brutal, but you're also like, yeah, give it to them because mm -hmm. they're so shitty. It's it, yeah. the, the 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 like the visual of like a male turning around and just smacking these three totally you know surprised girls in the face with lacrosse stick. Uh, almost took away them but like it, i was so caught up in that i was like oh that's actually that's sid getting revenge for these girls tormenting her for years but it, both of them going on at the same time is super intense well it's like double revenge because the guy's also shitty to her yeah 
and he gets he probably gets. And she's just like, oh, I saw him do it. He yeah, like, I'm. I mean, I'm standing over their fucking bodies here, but he totally did. <laughs> but it also shows like how ridiculous and absolutely jarring her ability is, like, or her power yeah. is. Like for anyone but her, because she's the only one that kind of gets it. And then when we get to the scene, which we heard her, she described last season when we actually see it in this episode of like the incident with her mom and how she loses her virginity is insane. Like that is so, I don't even know how to describe it. It's so like deep and gross and it understandable. It is and palpably traumatizing and it made my skin crawl. Yeah. It's like it's weird because it. You kind of get it from her, because mm-hmm. like how else she's never gonna experience that with anybody else. Because yeah. she, she, as soon as she touches someone, that's it. Her powers kick in. Exactly. Yeah. So she has to go fucking literally live vicariously through somebody else's body and touch. Yeah. She kind of rapes that guy. I mean, I yeah, 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 kind of. Uh, that's the only way. And I then can he gets to go. It. And then he goes to jail. Yeah, yeah. This show goes some dark places throughout. Um, yeah, because the only time you see her kind of happy is when she goes to that like punk club. Because mm-hmm. everyone's. Which, which then, like the next scene, that next shot of her, like, what was she was in a mental hospital, right? Yes, basically. I yeah. I have to assume that that's because she just experienced so many different personalities and minds at once that she just fucking went ape shit for a little while. Oh, see, I thought it was because her mom was like kind of. I would assume that her mom knows what she can do, because there's no other way that they could exist. Because yeah. it would have had to have happened accidentally at some point. Yeah. But when her mom realizes what Sid just did to that guy, that Sid can't be around people, and she can't be trusted on her own. Yeah. Yeah, to me, it was less about the club and more about, like, the sex. Yeah, but my thing with the, the club thing is that when she's shown strapped in the bed, she's in the exact same clothes she was in at a punk concert. Like, her hair is up in fucking knots yeah. and stuff. But she doesn't, she doesn't like do like a rogue thing where she like absorbs their consciousness. She just like kind of body flips. Mm. Yeah, but I imagine if you're doing it in such a, in like a mosh pit, it's going to be disorienting. Yeah. You go from, you know, a pair of eyes to a pair of eyes to a pair of eyes to a pair of eyes back to yours in the interim, like over and over and over again. I mean, to me, that sounds physically uh, (laughs) nauseating and and totally uh, stressful. Like, I don't want to go through that. (laughs) It no, absolutely. Draining, to say the least. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I was just, I was actually gonna make the rogue comparison because like rogue, rogue can't touch anybody. Period. <laughs> or else I, she'll probably kill them. I think um, that that's basically what they wanted to do, but they did like a little twist on the character, and I think it's actually a very interesting twist, and it's a way to like have that same problem like the rogue has, but with less damaging of an outcome. For... I kind of like that they have a rogue analog in two characters, like they split her up into two, because yeah. uh, what's-her-name has the gray streak now, and she's kind of the brawler. She's yeah. like, she's their person oh, they yeah. hang out to beat people up. Um, I keep forgetting her name, because I, uh, like I only see her. Carrie Carrie. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's right. Um, and then Sid has the whole, the whole, you know, lack of touch thing. Right. And I do love, I think... I can't remember which episode it is that we see it more, but I think it's this one. Like, the art style of, like, the world is just so gorgeous. So weird. And like, now, now is... how I can place this where and when is more confusing because in episode five, Lenny's like, oh, yeah, well, my grandpa, your uncle used to look at porn on the internet. I'm like, porn on the internet? It looks like it's the 70s. Like, <laughs> Well, yeah, everybody dresses in this weird, like, mod squad look. Yeah, which, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which leads like, to my theory always. that this is the same universe as Archer. Um, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a cinematic universe. Yeah, but is it Archer universe, or is it Dreamland, or is I, it I Danger know. Island? I, I mean, that's fair. It's fair. Archer's basically, ask. here's, I think what happened to Archer is... Um, the real world ISIS popped up, and oh, the creators yeah. were like, "Ugh." No, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I, I never to, looked into it, but I assume that's what happened. Yeah, I used to listen to. I can't remember her name. Who does Lana's voice? She has a podcast. Oh, oh. Ah. Um, she's done like a ton of stuff. Like, she's yeah, an actress. I know her. She's funny. Yeah. Um, she had a podcast. She had the creator on. He does the voice of Gillette, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, yeah, one, they did Archer Vice because he got really bored of writing the show and couldn't think of anything else. And then they had to do something as well after that because of ISIS, yeah. So that's why that's, they stopped being ISIS. That sucks. It's just like, 
It makes that sense. That show was so good as this kind of love letter to like James Bond and how all that kind well, of function. Well, it became a, It also started to go into that love letter to like the weird '70s TV stuff with like the uh, was it the five million dollar? I can't I always forget the million dollar man. I don't oh, know yeah, how many million. Oh yeah, dollar man because fucking Barry yeah, shows Barry. up dressed as him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's literally <laughs> always wearing the jumpsuit. And don't they do a suit and he's made of metal? Yeah. But they do oh, so. Oh, I love Cyber Barry. Which is okay to talk about because this is the same network. Yes, it is. Also, Arlen stepped away for a second, so we're just kind of filling air. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else. So, in episode four, episode four is just it was episodes four. It's it's funny to talk about because it's essentially the same ten minutes being played over again, with some stuff that's added or taken away every time. And what, well, the best part of it is is like uh, I don't know how long it took you. It took me, I think, by the time the second loop came around. I was like, oh, we're not in the labyrinth anymore. Like, it ended. Yeah. Oh, like, well, I, I, think, I, I, I think actually they had to tell me that because I wasn't okay. sure what was happening. Once, I can't remember whatever point it was like right before they told us like, oh, this is not like, this is not the same thing as the other two. Because it seems like when she, I can't remember when, when she goes and actually breaks the fourth wall kind of within the show and talks to him, like breaks the fourth wall of the loop and talks to him. I was like, oh, shit, we're definitely not in the labyrinth. Because yeah. none of the other characters didn't do that with him. Yeah, yeah, none of them really addressed... Some of them didn't even address him. Um, yeah, this is a weird thing she does, because it's basically just a personal test for David. Like, there's no real stakes. Mm-hmm. I think she's she's trying to prepare him for war. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also, it's also probably inspired by Jean Smart's character and her speech that gets repeated yes. later on. Um, about how, you know, they go off and they forget about us and we're just supposed to stay here and wait for them to come back. Um, Especially with her added knowledge, because I think he has told her at this point that he had seen future her. Yes. Which yeah. is also an interesting part of the season of the show, the time yeah. travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just like the idea of... Because um, David is this very kind of like... He is... He's a very sad individual, but he's very starry-eyed and seems to have this buried optimism that comes up a lot. Yeah. He's very like, oh, like <laughs> he's like a puppy at times. Yeah, yes. that, that's a great. He's very yes. he's very much like a puppy. He's like that naive. Everything in the world is cool and interesting. He, he constantly has an open grinned, wide eyed stare at things like, isn't that amazing? Which I is, think this is and it's like Sid is telling him like like she's bashing the nose. She's like every once in a while you're going to hurt and it's going to suck. Yeah. And that's what you have to get ready for. See, uh, this, I think this episode really fits in with what they're building up to with Future Sid, because I don't remember what episode it is. It's not the next one. It might be the one after that, that we get some more information from her. And it's something that they're building up to that I kind of got from the first time we saw her. But I won't now, spoil. It, has there been a Legion season three announced? I could yes. Yeah. I think yeah. they okay. announced like two more yeah. seasons. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Damn, I'm pretty I, sure they, they announced like four, but I think they fascinating said fascinating prospect because like I'm trying to figure out where this show was going to go because they're pl- they're building yeah. something. I just don't know what the fuck it is. I have an idea, and I think Lou and me might be on the same page about. Yeah, where I just going. don't want to. I don't want to spoil, and it's right. almost entirely said in like a couple of episodes, mm-hmm. but it's not like overtly said. Oh, Farouk, I mean. Uh, yes. Again, the minor, minor kind of spoiler is she kind of confirms uh, what you and me are probably thinking. Yes, that's um, what I'm talking about, where they don't overtly say it, but they basically say it. Yeah. I must have missed it entirely. It's, it's, it's not later, like, yeah. You I think it's seen. episode okay. six or seven. Yeah, okay. it's one that came we'll out ever get, pretty recently. Do you think what, because of how this whole Fox thing is going down, do you think that we will get an in-the-flesh Xavier at some point? Not, not this not, season. Not James McAvoy. I no. think if Patrick Stewart might do something, maybe like at the last, like last season, wherever they decide is the last season. Honestly, if he showed up in the final episode of this show ever, I would. That's what I would mean. Like if he yeah. would, because he's he has been mentioned again by another character. Yeah, and, I, mean, I think we it's see actually him in the, Farouk's eyes in the third yes. episode. Like, I think yeah. it's mentioned in episode six. When yeah. he meets the, is it the old black woman? I think so. Yes. Um, yes, she's like she says something like, "Where's the professor?" or like something about the professor. 
Yeah. Okay. I, I, mean, I also I, I would like more. Um, I would like more stuff like that to the larger X Men universe. I don't need a fucking Wolverine right. reference. Like, I don't need someone to go like, "Hmm, we're gonna drive by the Weapon X facility." Wink, wink. Right. Um, no, I don't need any of that. But if you want to make a like a, a very vague reference to an event that might have happened, involving, the X Men, some other faction of mutants. Maybe, maybe the X Men don't exist. Maybe it's a fucking nation of mutants, like in some. Uh, what is it? That's later in Marvel, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Genosha. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would, I would be more happy if he mentioned kind of like, oh, you're not the first, like one of his, the professors, like mm-hmm. students or like offspring esque people I've contacted, who mm-hmm. try to control because in the comics he, they first meet because he tries to take over Storm, I believe. Hmm. Interesting. Because Storm is in Egypt. Right. And... That, yeah, that would that makes sense. Um. And see, or with or with how Fox has like splintered the live action X Men universe so much as far as timelines go, like I could also easily buy that this is a different timeline altogether. Where like the yeah. X Men just don't fucking happen. Yeah, I I think well, there's, there's a lot of things that go into that. So for one, well, this... Stewart has said that he doesn't want to do it anymore because of Logan, because he's like, yeah, that seems like a perfect ending for me. But at the same time, he said, "Well, I would, yeah, I would do it for that. I would, I would go on there if they asked me to. So it would, it would be interesting. But I would almost rather they did do somebody else, like let somebody else take that character, who is cast to be Dan Stevens' dad, like yeah. with that specific like thing in mind of like, who do you believe could play Dan Stevens' father?" And who would be the best casting for that? Because uh, McAvoy isn't necessarily the best casting for that, and neither is Stewart. No, because like, well, McAvoy's, well, like McAvoy's this, probably the, like same, the same age, age or younger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, Dan Stevens is a giant, so is he yeah. really? Well, he played Beast in Beauty and the Beast. Like yeah. he's a. He's, Man, I, I think he's like yeah, six three I, I, or six four or something. I like want to like, see him as Reverse Flash even more now. <laughs> oh man, he would have him great. tower over Ezra Miller. God, he'd be a great Eobard. Yeah, he would be. He would, but I'm still I'm still holding out a hope that Matthew McConaughey lands that role. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it uh... was me, Barry. <laughs> now the closest thing I'll ever get though is Tom Cavanaugh playing a Matthew McConaughey ripoff who is also a Harrison Wells who became the Reverse Flash at some point. That would be hilarious. <laughs> um, oh, but, but I was I was gonna say like the one thing that the show has going for it is that we never really know how much is real so it can fold into any universe hell i would not be surprised if the end of the season it just pulls out and david's like in a straight jacket in like some super cell and then everything is just going on in his head that would not surprise me it wouldn't surprise me but i would fucking hate it oh i would Um, be furious yeah because that's it you're falling back on one of the most overused tropes ever and i've only seen it done exceptionally well a handful of times in the last decade where it was all a dream and one of those instances was repo men if believe that or not um mm-hmm. with jude law because that movie has the balls to give you probably the best ending you can hope for and then pulls back and takes you an hour prior in the movie and tells you like yeah when jude law got bonked in the head he's basically a vegetable none of this happened it's a jacob ladder scenario Kind of. I was like, you, also <laughs> referencing, um, what do you call it? I got it, yeah. <laughs> How did this get made? <laughs> is is this a Jacob's Ladder scenario? <laughs> so, I yeah. don't think I've seen listened to that episode yet. It's he, every episode. It's a, it's it's a really? running bit. It's oh, a running okay. bit because of like, with that movie, and it happens in movies like all the time. It's they like, yeah. oh, this whole movie was in the character's head, and he's been dead the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I, with Repo this, Man, how I, uh, ooh, you have know, you guys, have you seen Repo Man, Lou? Um, I think a while ago. Yeah, uh, somebody like in the middle of the movie, someone whacks Jude Law's character with like a fucking, like a meat hook or something mm. really heavy, and it's implied he goes out for a second and wakes back up, and then he just like he becomes a super action star for the rest of the film, kicks everyone's ass, takes down the mega evil corporation. And then flash of white, he's on a beach. Flash of white again, he's laying on the ground with his eyes open and blood pouring out of his head. And Forrest Whitaker's like, 
damn. And just That's... basically implants this chip into Dudelaw's head to make him live in a perpetual fantasy land where everything goes right for him all the it's time. It's literally like the definition of a Jacob's Ladder scenario. <laughs> yeah, and it's done well because you 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 get this very kind of... I feel, it's almost earned because everyone's just awful in this movie. Uh, and then it pulls back real fucking hard. You're like, oh! <laughs> that... This sounds like something that would be a Black Mirror episode now. <laughs> yeah, it felt like yeah. someone gave me a puppy and then took it away and gave it to someone else. Oh, so Black oh. Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Except that puppy was a robot. Yes. <laughs> I'm friend dog. Um, Dr. My dog speaking human words? Oh, That's now it. we're back. It's like that parrot in Archer. That's a Game Grumps bit anyway. Um, so episode four ends with fucking... Uh, they wake up after Sid basically tells them, like, yeah, love's not going to get us through everything. Sometimes we're going to hurt, and sometimes pain is not only expected, but required. Mm-hmm. Uh, and well, I then... think it's, like, a perfect lead-up to episode five. Yep, yeah. it, it really is. Yeah. Uh, um... And then and that episode ends with a cover, which I found out today is by Jeff Russo, the composer, and Noah Hawley, the writer of the show. Oh, and, really? Uh, and apparently the music they're on doing the, show's... the whole album. Uh, the music on the show is amazing. Weird, like these fucking acidy, uh, kind of lo-fi electronic covers of mm. '70s rock songs, and it works every time. Yeah, yeah. I, remember, mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of synth. Like I get a lot of that. Um, like what we get in like Stranger Things. What's the What's the Carpenter that does all that stuff? Yeah, John Carpenter. He's he's probably yeah. the most famous for it. But I yeah, feel like, like we get a lot of that kind of feel in the the yeah. show as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely Russo, who also... What was the other one he did? He, he's done a bunch of stuff, but he does, like, The Night Of, and uh, I was looking him up just earlier, but... um. Oh, this is yeah. totally off-topic, but this show has my favorite set of all shows I've ever watched, and it's their, like, weird restaurant diner in the middle of this thing <laughs> that has the little Japanese boats. It's they so use good. it so much, but it's so weird. It's so awesome. Like, I want to eat there. Like, yeah, I just want to watch these little boats. Every Everything in the show as far as sets go are so respectably done mm-hmm. uh, because they don't they, they're so different looking that room they keep Aubrey Plaza in episode 5 just doesn't make any sense to me at all no it has like a weird stairs and it everything well, it looks like you're walking into it and as soon as you step foot in it like gravity fucking reverses and you're on the ceiling or something well cause they always show her where she's like laying on the bed with her head hung over the bed yeah so like whenever they cut to her perspective the world's upside down well, and, the, like, the ceiling looks like it's showing the ground from outside. Yeah, yeah. but that's all, like, all they do that throughout their show where they mess with your perspective because mm-hmm. for characters as powerful as David and Farouk and um, I always keep forgetting his name, uh, Oliver R., like, anything they want the world to be, it will be. Right. Yeah, and then you have, like, th- there was a room that Admiral... Uh, Fukuyama was in with his fucking basket head. That's that's him, right? The basket head guy. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. yes. I yeah, think his, his his room or wherever he was staying in the, a few episodes ago is the most jarring physical thing ever because I don't know what the hell's going on there. I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what episode, but we get his backstory and we get to see him soon. I think it's yeah, seven. Yeah, we do. Seven or it's, eight. It's it's somewhere in there. It's it's. It's not too much further. Yeah. It's, it's when we get the return. One. Whenever John Hamm returns to do our voiceover at the beginning of the episode, because he's gone for like I, these two episodes. I love those. I want a montage of all of them. It's, yeah, yeah. It's I hope so they release weird. them as like one episode, so you can just like sit there and listen to him talk, because it's fascinating. Because they're it's, always relevant. It's it's yeah. it's it's something that has to do with something that's going to happen in the episode, but also they're genuinely informative. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. it's like listening to John Hamm read, like, the lecture topics for your class on Psych 101. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a Vsauce video, but not obnoxious. Yeah, and the and the examples that it's put over are always fascinating to look at. Um, I don't know they which all, episode they, this was in, but the cheerleaders who are all, like, doing that, like, oh, Twitch yeah. thing. It was, that was oh, just the, it was the, uh, it was the, the it was two episodes the, ago. Like, the psychosis virus, where, like, basically yeah. yes. you could, like, they cite examples of, like, the laughing epidemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a real it's what, thing. It's what uh, led into the last episode where everybody's in the maze. It's how they yeah. explain the teeth chattering thing. It's like yeah. the, the insanity of the monks. He brought it with him, that monk. Yeah, yeah and insanity is contagious in some situations. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so this episode ends with uh, Aubrey Plaza showing up uh, in a brand new physical body. Yep. Yay! And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then the then then, I, he, then the madness begins. <laughs> once he once he said, "Why are your eyes? What do you say, green or blue?" blue yeah. I literally said out loud, "Fuck you, Legion." <laughs> I, exactly, I was like, I knew exactly what was gonna happen. I was like, "All right, how horrible is this gonna be?" I was unsure where it was going, and I, I, you know, I had a couple different ideas in my mind. I don't remember what the other idea was, but once I settled it on, oh, she's she's the sister. I was like, fuck. Fuck you! I hate this so much. This is so, this is terrible. But it, I also hey, this, love it. This episode spends a lot of time. I think there's a moment in this episode that actually describes the entire affair from start to finish. It's when you're at the sister's house and her husband, I guess Ben, mm-hmm. yeah. is when like he... he's like, "You ever had the feeling that something bad is going to happen, but it yeah. hasn't happened yet?" And I'm like, thanks, you just described the last 30 minutes of my whole life. Like, <laughs> Well, I can't yeah. remember, somebody says, like, yeah, I don't remember if it's a voiceover or someone's like, that's the definition of tread. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he yeah. says it, he's like, yeah, he, he's like, what's that called? Tread? And yeah. then, and I love that, like, the things in the background that are going on, like, they establish that there's a windmill, and the sound of that windmill. And when the windmill stops being there... It's just so noticeable, and you're like, oh, "Why is the wind it's, stopped?" It's when they're talking. It sounds like fucking wings. It's like, <laughs> and it's making yeah. a shadow over their house. And like, as he's doing this, like, you ever feel like something bad's gonna happen? It's getting louder and louder and louder. I'm like, this is really starting to make me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I mean, I'm gonna say that's it again. Not, no, that's Holly should direct beginning. Conjuring 3. <laughs> yeah, and that's not in the beginning of the freaky stuff, because uh, yeah. Tonomy goes in to attempt to look into Letty's head, and is like, all right, let's <laughs> see what the deal is, because there's no way you're here, because we wedged you out of a wall. Yep. Um, and he, he makes an attempt, and it goes south immediately. Yeah. It Which, um, on him. that, this episode has a lot of stuff where it's like, it's tying stuff that we've already seen into it, as well as bringing it to what's going to happen in the next couple of episodes. Yeah. Because, like, it connects the whole why they bro- why um, Oliver and Farouk broke in in the first place. In episode, mm-hmm. was that one or two? Yeah. Two, I think. Yeah, yeah when they kill people was... to show tunes. <laughs> yes. So it was to steal that random piece of technology that yes. makes horrible things happen. It's yeah. it, that tech, that piece of technology they got from the Eobard Thawn School of Advanced Villainy. <laughs> they did. Okay? <laughs> well, like, from what I gather, basically, Carrie just makes things. The uh, Carrie with a C, the guy, he just makes um, technology. That probably, I, but they probably also retrieve stuff. Like, Division 3, I imagine that they fight a lot of, like, mutant supervillains who have technology oh, yeah. like that. They're like the men in black, but for mutants. Right. So they would have like a vault of like, these are weapons that nobody should be able to use, but we have them because we should at least keep them in case there ever is a need for them. Um, it's just, I don't, again, to go back to like the aesthetics, like their technology is so, Yeah. I'm trying to think of the word, it's not digital, it's like... No, it's, um, it's, uh, it's retro, it's not steampunk. It's fucking, everything, it's, everything feels it's, very it's like... It's analog. There you, go, yes. there you go, you took it over. It's analog. It's analog. It's analog, but then you have stuff like this that looks like a legitimate Men in Black weapon. Yeah, yeah. but like That's... everything, like when when David's using the thing, like Carrie's changing plugs, mm-hmm. like yeah. like a microphone, like a, plug. like a switchboard. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, everybody's computer looks like it's from forty years ago. Uh, like all the screens are big and ugly and green. It's like Alien. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is like because of the which you haven't seen Connor yet, but the next episode, some of the stuff they show us is like. Is this stuff that they use because it can't be as hacked? Like, they don't have, like, a network? Um, I think for Division 3, that's at least a solid That's, like, my head, that's my head canon because, like, what we see yeah. in the next episode is that we're kind of in current day. Well, yeah, like I said, in this episode, ish. Aubrey Plaza referenced the fact that, like, Letty's uncle, she says, my uncle used to sit on the internet and watch porn or something like that while Granny gave me a, a Rondo citrus soda. Well... Yeah, yeah, he he did say he liked watching young girls get, 
I, did she say that did she use the F word? Did she actually use it? I don't remember. Or if it was... No, but, she doesn't. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, black guys doing things to young girls, uh, preteen girls or whatever. Yes, um, that was the line. But I don't remember if she explicitly says internet. Our she heads does. might no, have filled in. No, no, it was the... It, it, cause I, ju- I also just watched it, like, because that word made my head spin. I was like, oh, okay, so we're oh. in the modern day? Yeah, they also, like, I think her and her grandma are watching TV, and it's, like, a regular TV. She's not, like, watching a, a 70s... TV, yeah. But yeah. but their living room looks like they'd be watching a big, giant, hideous fucking dial to, a dial yeah. Uh, yeah. box. They look like they'd be watching a TV that still had the remote that was connected to the cord. To yeah, the more one of those big, giant brick remotes with huge buttons. Yep, yeah. and you can That was like literally a clicker. Yeah, click, click, click. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even the soda can looked like it was from 100 years ago. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it just like plain a ass text, just a, like a little lemon on it. Like it's weird. Like I, I come, I'm trying to think. It's like they, it's not steampunk because it's obviously better than that. But it's almost like that concept. But instead of like all the technology evolved from like 1960s stuff yeah. and never got digital. Like it's that analog thing. But it's like everything is better it's analog. It's kind of like it's like Fallout where. Yeah. They describe the world of Fallout as being stuck in a cultural stasis because the Cold War, like, never ends, basically. Mm-hmm. And then because we have a sudden reliance on nuclear energy and nuclear power, like, it's in everything, it's in your fucking coffee maker, that style of, like, that 1950s infomercial style yeah. of everything just stuck around for 200 years. I can't remember in Fallout, they specifically say there's, like, one thing that's, like, not created, and that's why they're stuck there. Yeah, I yeah, no, I read it. I read it. it. It's and they use the word cultural stasis. I think that's and that's the the I thought the term was fascinating. I think and I, I you're right. They do say something doesn't happen to create this it's weird like, timeline. It's like the radio or something like something changes with like the radio like with FM. So there's never any like rock music. There's no any of that stuff. Yeah, because then like why in the year like 2040 or you know 2240 whatever. It's like, let's listen to this song from 1933. (laughs) There's never an implication that music was made uh, kind of right before the bombs dropped that didn't sound like uh, mega oldies. Right. Oh, I I think it's like it's in this. It's still relatively confusing because you don't get a view of pop culture or larger culture in Legion. You're kind of stuck with these people and you, you kind of have to extrapolate it from there. I think I found something pretty close to what we're describing. Uh, this is diesel punk, but this is 1950s. Diesel, it, it's diesel punk. I, I thought diesel punk was like a uh, road warrior type thing. Mad Max. That I, I don't know about that. Maybe maybe it is. Well, because well no, Mad Max would count as diesel punk because of the cars. The cars are all 50s style. Um, at least in Fury Road, they're all like, you know what I mean? Like they're like 50, they're those like. 50s like big you know like giant sedans or whatever yeah. uh that might as well be trucks they just need a bed um like but it's it's that sort of style that like old old cadillacs old fords old you know cars that just look like they were built to like just knock through walls and shit um, i think i think a term you might be looking for too is retro futuristic yeah, it's definitely yeah. that, which is like a broad thing. Cyberpunk is yeah. included in that as well. But this could um, be too, just because, like we said, how everybody, how everybody does their hair, how everybody dresses, mm-hmm. uh, the, the style of houses, the style of buildings. It's all so I do, I do from think another what, time. What will happen, yeah. though, is in the next couple of episodes, it does swerve that a bit hmm, from right. starting in the next episode. Because we start to see more of the outside world in that one, and then in several episodes going forward. I mean, in the next episode, and this isn't again. We told Connor that the next episode's like a series of vignettes. David has like a flip phone from the two thousand at some point. Um, like but then he's also isn't he in a smart house kind of thing at one point? I don't remember that, but you you could be right. Um, I'm pretty sure he has like a like a nice kind of macbook x oh thing. okay that's that's like uh that's rich that's rich david. yeah rich um, david yeah which uh rich david is my favorite character oh <laughs> he's the best he's, oh actually no he, meth uh meth head david's my favorite meth head yeah uh, with the french like, fries. I saw, what I are saw you talking a, about i saw a clip of meth head david and laughed my ass off he's, he's the, the best because what's weird so is good. he gets it he's right 
Like he his explanation. But yeah, Rich, he's, his but, explanation is perfect. Yeah, Rich David though. Rich David is he's he's so great. He's but he's basically the way I interpreted him is he's David in Farouk if they like completely merge into like yes. one person. Like he's David if full yeah exactly, uh, and he's he is amazing. Uh, he's just such a like he's such a dick, but I love him so much. He, um, he's like he's the one thing that's weird with him is that he's he's sl- he's almost the mo- he's like the second most powerful, but that's because he still has some control. Because mm-hmm. uh, Crazy David is, I think, the most powerful yes. because he's like uncontrolled. Yes, yes, he's. Crazy David is, is also pretty great. Does, uh, does any of them have the hair? Which uh, hair? The hair. The, the Legion comic hair. Oh, no, I no, don't think so. Damn. No. <laughs> no, like, two of them, like, one David is just looks exactly like him. Old David is, like, slicked back and gray. And then Crazy David is, like... He's like a caveman. Like, he's, like yeah. cave, he's like the Geico caveman commercials. But, like, he has a... They recreate a scene from... Uh, Clockwork Orange at one point, which that's, oh, my absolutely. Favorite, that's my favorite thing ever that they did that. Um, but yeah, like that episode is really weird. I can't um, wait to talk about it because there's so many awesome things in it because they also do like a very Watchmen esque thing in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to trace back where that came from, where that, where that, uh, where we started with that. Um, oh, well, I was saying like they kind of changed this like yes, look yes, yes. starting in that episode. Yes, I was referencing the, yeah the cell phone and how he, it's just like a flip yeah. phone, just like any flip phone, a flip phone that you would have now actually, for I was, the people yeah. that still have them. Uh, yeah, but uh, there's a very much a mix, and you were pointing out the computer like he does have like a MacBook, like a like an error. That's where it's like, like it's that. when they start showing that it's almost like this. I can't. I'm terrible. The section whatever section three that they're part of is almost like lower tech than the rest of the world mm-hmm. in a weird way. <laughs> they're yeah. they're under budgeted. The way that well, no, I, I kind of interpreted that though is that because it is an episode about parallel universes, that yeah, could the, just be another universe. Yeah, the world. Um, evolved. I guess like when um, the episode, I think it's the one after that. Mm-hmm. I think that's the last one I saw. The ending when I'm trying to be as vague as possible. When someone goes somewhere, like the vehicle they use looks really modern. Yeah. Compared yeah. to every other vehicle you have seen, like that looks like a 2018 esque vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Because um, to I, me, I when Far- when Farouk and um, Oliver are driving around, like they're purposely driving around this like 80s pimp mobile. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. And the and the donut truck or whatever, the desert dead man. That donut was that or was whatever. Was talking about Fallout, that was like so Fallout. Yeah. <laughs> like a submarine <laughs> that they put wheels on. Yeah, I fucking. <laughs> The donut mobile. <laughs> it reminded me of like an Oscar, the Oscar Mayer Wiener mobile, but yeah. And the fact that like it, what's her face's husband came home was like, "Yep, everything's good." Sold some donuts. I'm like, "Yeah, out of your donut submarine." Yeah. In the desert. <laughs> In the de- who'd you sell them to? See some road workers. <laughs> A dying man on the side of the road. <laughs> but they also, I can't remember. Aren't they wearing like kind of 1950s? Like, I kept thinking that they look like milkmen. Like the yeah, outfits they, that you would see, like leave it to be. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. It's 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 very weird. There's a lot of mixed metaphors, I guess. It's the best way to describe it. It's the whole thing. Like show. every part of the show, besides like the narrative and the acting, like is part of what the show is. Like mm-hmm. the entire aesthetic of everything, the music, the visuals, everything is like part of it because everything is yeah. so bananas. Yeah. Um, speaking of bananas, uh, so basically the hook of this episode is everyone's trying to figure out yeah what the deal with letty is because there's no way she's just back uh because her her physical body was fucking wrecked yep uh i think she describes at some point as her tits were in one room and her ass were in the other one is in the other so one good. <laughs> uh, in yeah. a way that only aubrey plaza could say uh yep. she rules this entire episode she's giving a performance i've never seen come out of her before because usually she's a comedy actress um yeah. and is well, she was the, it's scary disturbed uh, performance in this in season one she was like scary at points like her yes. menacing uh shadow king was great yeah even especially in the silent episode um, oh that was so good i do was... like how i think it's this episode where she describes how like they're 
how she was, yeah. but that he puts them in like a little drawer to play with, mm-hmm. or yeah, something yeah, like, like that. Puppets. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think she even goes on to say like he does things like he did things to me in there just because they were fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and and I, like I love I love his viewpoint on reality, and I kind of like that Oliver is kind of cool with him because he has a similar like view because he lived inside his own head for all those years. Um, and well, the, I think it's also this episode where the two of them are talking and Oliver is mm-hmm. like, "I'm gonna they, kill like, you." Yeah, like yeah. kind of says is like, yeah, we are playing a game, and I'm going, I'm playing to win. Yeah, and I do. I, I mean, I love that you know his. I figured out your weakness. One plus one equals two, but I think it isn't it like one plus one equals three or something that people say when they're talking about like when you team up with somebody, or. Yeah, well, he like says, that. like, what, yeah, he says, like, what is one plus one equal? And then, like, Farouk says two, and he goes, and, like, kind of just shakes his head. And Farouk just starts laughing, and he's like, I like you, this is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and his, and his, his whole philosophy that, that, about killing people also is fascinating. The they whole get into, stars and whatever. Yeah, about morality. Mm-hmm. And, well, ask Oliver about morale. And instead of even answering, he just goes into a big about how life and death constructs we might have come up with uh who's to say the of our bodies aren't the same atoms that were blown apart from stars billions of years ago yeah and i love that he goes back to he's like wait what, what were we talking about yeah what was the question it's real pa- <laughs> it's real hey pass the joint type of conversation <laughs> <laughs> like this show feels like to me like what would happen like if they gave uh oh my god i just forgot his name the like, comic writer that wrote x-men for forever Oh, um... And made Damien, he's Scottish. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, but yeah, um... I can't remember. Because he's, like, off the walls like this. Yeah. I can't... Oh, my well, God. I, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced that Noah Hawley has had, uh, either... All the drugs? Recent, recent psychedelic experience, or has had several psychedelic experiences. Several, um, definitely. And, and applies them to this, because as someone who's, uh, who's who's traveled the stars myself, um, some of this stuff is very immediately relatable. Uh, so, David finally comes in to talk to Letty, and this is when the horror show yep. really gets underway, because he's like, why do you have blue eyes? And he looks inside of her head and has more success than anybody else, but I kind of wish he didn't. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, throughout this little episode, Oliver and Farouk find Letty's original body, which they don't show us, which I was wondering if they would. I was like, are you going to go that far? Yeah. Um, well, they show, like, a chunk arm. of it. Yeah. 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 She's uh, very they take, like, they take just, like, a piece of skin. They put it in this weird gun uh, that they took from Division 3. Uh, and then they go to David's sister's house. Um, and they turn yeah. David, her, her, her husband gets turned to Ash. Yep. Uh, this is after the windmill stops moving, after the whole dread thing. And then it's yeah. just that the tension builds up, and this whole sequence is maybe two and a half minutes long and feels like it's ten. Well, uh, her immediate reaction when she sees Oliver, she's like, because she knows she met him, so she's like, Oliver? Yeah. And then she looks at the, I think she looks at the ground and it's like, the dr- like, like the visible dread on her face of like, I know what is going to happen. I'm going to run, but I know it's to no avail. I am done. Wait, well, yeah, she turns to go to the door and like, Oliver's just there. Yeah. Um, he just fucking teleports and he never lowers it. he's got these like he's got his hands up like a doctor about to go into a surgical suite yeah like he's got his hands up he just washed them but he can't touch anything and he just kind of remain. he holds that pose as he's walking towards her uh and then a cover of what's the name of this one again don't come oh. around here no more yeah I think it is yeah yeah a cover of that starts playing but it's super tripped out and not quite the same um Yep. And he, again, he, Holly and Russo doing, yeah. doing the covers. Uh, so he levitates her, slams her down the the living room table, and just starts blasting her with this gun. And it's not a the transformation, transformation is gr- grotesque yeah. in a yeah, weird way. Yeah, you hear you hear bones breaking. You hear like muscles being rearranged. You watch her eyeballs change shape in a very grotesque manner, and she is screaming her ass off the whole time. Yeah. And you hear, like, they go from, like, one voice screaming to kind of both to then the other one. Yep. Yeah. And it, it, it and didn't... Like, 
the uh, the the metaphor didn't occur to me until I saw it again. That Oliver in the beginning of that scene is singing "Happy Birthday." Um, uh, just uh, uh, well, because they they dump her in the right. desert, so that could even be like a them afterwards. Yeah, but yeah, it's just. Yeah, th- that whole sequence is just very... Yes, and the revelation is that they stole David's sister's body. She's effectively dead. Yeah. Um, well... Well, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. For now, let's say that's, let's go with that, yeah. Yeah, they, um, they rewrote her entire physical structure and took away her memories. Like, she is, for all intents and purposes, no longer... She no longer exists. Yeah, basically what they did was, like, they rewrote her DNA to turn yeah. her body into Aubrey Plaza's. And then and the then... Shadow King... Basically, copy and pasted yep. her in, well, like cut and paste because she's not in his head. So yeah. he took her out and put her in there. But there is some sort of melding because of the last shot of the episode. She does exactly what um, Amy did for David. Like she holds him the exact same way. Yeah. And they do address it going forward that like there are parts of Amy that are still in there. Oof. Yeah. Ugh. And it, and it, it I. The Ebarthon thing is a joke, but it also it's very reminiscent of. There's a deleted scene from Flash season one where Joe approaches uh, Harrison and Eobard, um, and they kind of have a conversation. Eobard says like, "Yeah, there's still pieces of a man I don't know in there," and it comes every once in a while. He's like, "I get teary eyed about a woman I don't even know," because he's been in Harrison Wells' body for so long that now he basically like it's 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 a, it's not an even split. I would say it's probably. 80 20 at this point. Hello? Yeah. Oh, no, I was just like, I was just like thinking about that because it kind of reminds me of, um, I can't remember what it's called. I think they, they refer to it as completely not proven as anyway, but they, I think they call it like DNA memory, where it's kind of that idea of things uh, that you or someone else have done, you can kind of pass on to a descendant. And that's how, like, evolution kind of happens. Well, there are weird stories uh, about people receiving uh, body parts or organs from somebody, and they suddenly have a new taste for something or a new distaste for something. Exactly. uh, And you find out out later on it's from the donor. Yeah. That's some wacky shit. Um, Yeah, there is the classic Jeff Fahey movie. uh, What was the name of that movie? Is it Eyes with uh, what's her name from Fantastic Four? Is that the one you're thinking well, of? The, the, the Eye is a remake of a Japanese horror movie. No, I'm, okay. I'm thinking about the one with the hand, where Jeff Fahey gets a different hand. His hand starts to kill You're not him. talking about... Um... You're talking about Idle Hands? <laughs> yeah, that's also a Jessica Alba movie. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. It's, it's the same era as um, Connor's favorite movie, A One More Man. Oh, no! Oh. Oh. <laughs> what movie was that? I'm going to ring every telephone in the world. But there's another one where Jeff Fahey plays oh, a man who gets Lawn a hand Lawn transplant, Lawn. and his hand was a serial killer. Oh, um, I definitely know what you're talking fucking, about. Oh, damn it. Hang on. I, I think I know what this is. I think I can, I think I can did conjure Did they do that, up. and how did this get made? I think they did, yeah. Because, uh, of, because of how much they loved Lawn, Lawnmower Man. <laughs> Uh, I think I can conjure up like the box art in my head. And again, if you ever body do parts. Um, yes, yes, body parts, that's what it's called. Yep, 1991. If you ever do one co- more, man, let the, me know. The cover, he looks like Billy Zane, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's but an underappreciated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that was uh, that's that was Legion. Uh, it ends with David screaming in fucking horror. And, and me too. I was in my room just kind of. Ah! <laughs> Uh, but not really. as, as weird as it is to say, I think that this episode, to me, once again, showed like how good comedians or comedic actors and actresses are doing serious stuff. Because both, like, Jermaine Clement is mostly a comedic actor, comedian, and he's great in this. And so is uh, Katie Asselton, who plays the sister. Yeah. Like, Every other thing I've ever seen her in is completely comedy. Well, and if you look at um, uh, Dan Stevens, like, the first time I saw Dan Stevens was The Guest, where he's the scariest man alive, yeah. uh, and now he's a puppy. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's done, a, he's done, like, a massive ton of stuff. Like, he's yeah. a big star. Yeah. He was in, which, uh, he was in Down Abbey for, like, seven years or something ridiculous. Was he really? Yeah, he was, like, the number two slash star of the show. That's yeah, interesting. It, it, it's, it's interesting because before I had ever seen anything that he was in, I just knew him as the guy James Bond fans think should play James Bond. 
Dex. What? <laughs> like she was, like he's just a constant person. Like when you're a James Bond fan, there are certain people that just are around that are names of like, who should play him after this person? That's such a. I don't think he's, he's not Bond to me at all. He's ever since I think the he, guest, he held that for like three if years. If you watch at least. him in Down Abbey, which I did watch because my wife loved it, but he was in three seasons. He actually like just they had to like rewrite the whole show because he left. Oh wow! Because he was basically the star, mm. and like they killed, they had to kill him off because he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go do movies now. I don't want to do this British television show for my entire <laughs> life." Yeah. Sorry. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, which he then did like a ton of like awesome movies and he's made like a ton of money. So good on him. Yeah. But, um, he was great in that show. Cause he was like a, I think he was kind of like a lawyer that gets thrown into their thing where he's like the one that's going to inherit everything. I, but he's very I good at playing nice, charming guy. Downtown Abbey. <laughs> <sighs> Conceptually, it's a great show and the acting is by far like it's absolutely phenomenal which is why like everyone from that show has gone on to do like amazing work in other movies I and tv only shows know it, i only know it because uh john favreau yells at the nurse for turning it off in iron man 3 <laughs> so but there are tons he's like of... what are you doing oh yeah it's when tony stark tells him he's like uh, downtown happy he really likes it Just yeah there's like forward. a ton of cameos in it because uh oh man what's his name does a cameo that's so weird um the guy that plays rhino in amazing spider-man 2 Paul Giamatti? Oh. Yeah, he does a cameo in, like, a one season of the show. Like, oh, that's your frame of reference to Paul Giamatti. I know, like, I, that was the first <laughs> thing that popped in my head. I feel really bad. I mean, uh, I mean, for me, it's liar, liar, because I grew up when that movie was a thing. So. I mean, my favorite Paul Giamatti or, performance is a big is fat liar. Up, so. Oh, I, like, the other thing I think of him in is the Howard Stern movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. he's amazing in Shoot'em Up. He's my favorite person in Shoot'em Up. He's fucking chewing. No, uh, Clive Owen choosing the carrots. Uh, he's he's basically Elmer Fudd the entire film. Mm-hmm. I love that that movie is basically just Bugs and Elmer. It's so uh, slapstick and cartoon. Uh, it is ridiculous. I love that movie to pieces, and I don't think that guy has made anything since. He's dropped a baby to himself before Jason Statham. Jason Statham owes him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he dropped the baby? Are we talking about the pacifier? That was a... Doesn't he have a baby on him when he goes out of a jet plane, or am I thinking of something else? Yeah, no, that's in one of the Fast movies. Jace, and then, um, what do you call it, Vin Diesel did it in The Pacifier. Well, I'm trying to, well, because I, I distinctly remember, did Clive Owen not do that well in that movie? I, I feel like he did, I don't know. I might be mixing my movies No, he up. did. He, um, he, he, he does an entire shootout holding a baby. Yes, that's right. Yeah. He's critical to his chest, I think, and he just he, he wrecks an entire warehouse full of dudes. Yeah. But he does fall out of an airplane later, so if you think yes. about it, it does make sense why I confused yeah, I think two, he, two like, scenes from the same he, film. I think he basically he jumps out of an airplane and starts taking parachutes off people <laughs> and knocking them through the air, so they all just hit the ground into a big red paste. Yeah, that, that movie <laughs> feels like it feels like a stunt uh, a stunt man or stunt coordinator was like hmm, I have all these stunts that I wish that I had done. I'm going to do them, but I'm going to do them more extreme than they were done in other movies. I'm going to do them through the eyes of a serial killer. Yes. <laughs> so uh, There's break. also a sequence in John Woo's Red Cliff, which is, for anybody out there who's ever played Dynasty Warriors and you love that section of history, there's a movie made based on it by John Woo. Please go out and see it. Um, What's uh, the name uh, of that one? Uh, Red Cliff. And it's basically it's based mostly on the battle of chibi uh where, oh, okay because i was confused uh, what is do you remember the one that jet lee did where the he has to take a couple steps is it hero yeah, yeah oh hero. i love i love hero yeah because that's like the movie. same time period isn't it yeah it, it i think so kind of um but it's based on the battle like of a... chibi it's like it's, like it's like it's like expensive Chinese movie ever. I think it is ridiculous it's one of the coolest looking war movies i've ever seen because mm. um, they have huge practical battles. Um, but in the beginning, like during a siege on a village, uh, Zhou Yu, I believe is the warrior's name. He's one of my favorite characters in Dynasty Warriors to play as. He ties a baby to his back, like in a tight mm. little uh, like sack, and then just picks up a spear and murks like 15 people. <laughs> and then jumps Damn. in a horse and keeps doing it and brings this baby all the way back to his father. <laughs> Whoa. I, I, I was like, see this. <laughs> It's a oh, Red Cliff rules. Um, it details like the strategies of Zhuge Liang, uh, like uh, 
uh, Cow Cow, all those people. It was probably Sal Sal. I haven't. It's been a long time since I've had to pronounce those names. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Boo does not come up, though. It's everyone's disappointment. And uh, that is a headpiece. It can never be as fun as uh, if you've never seen The Protector. That is my favorite one of those kind of movies. Oh, I love The Protector. It's not a historical one. The Protector is awesome. I love Tony Jaa. Yeah. Um, I think we can wrap, though. If we're going to take a little break after this go to the news episode. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think we're good. Um, yeah, we're going to do a double yeah. record tonight, so we're going to end this one, and then uh, we'll be back soon for, yeah. well, I mean, not soon for anybody listening to this. No. no. Yeah, it's hard to talk about the show because it's awesome and batshit bananas crazy. Yep. That, yeah, that but also accurate. there's probably no no reason to talk about two episodes for two hours. Yeah. Nah. Definitely. So all right, I've been Connor McGraw. This has been Legion, um, Movie Dumpsters' latest episode, which was Tammy and the T Rex, is out, uh, and we're recording Norm the Gnome probably tomorrow. <laughs> Just fucking hate this movie so fucking much. <laughs> it is awful. Um, it's got Anthony Michael Hall and Robert Zadar, who has a gigantic face. Uh, yes, I saw a picture yesterday and it actually <laughs> confused and befuddled me. <laughs> um, Arlen Haro, uh, A Haro in all the places, um, Lost Haro podcast. I think the most recent episode is our De Palma episode, so go listen to that. Um, I think that's all I got, other than uh, Project Hawkeye coming soon. Look forward to that. And I'm Lou Gonzalez, and you check out the Smallville Chronicles that it's on here. The last episode we did was cool, and then this Wednesday, I, I actually don't remember what the next one is. I think it's the one with where we get the per- woman, old woman who can see into the future, ah. which has like a ton of amazing things in it. Mm, nice. Yeah. And it has the greatest foreshadowing, because it foreshadows something that they do in the last I think it's the last scene of the last episode of the series yep yeah alrighty this is the end of the show uh, yes. alrighty bye everybody bye adios fuck X-Men Apocalypse especially in a universe that Legion exists in yeah.